This is one of the, my favorite food plots that we have on the three properties we have in Southwest Wisconsin. Um, you see it's full of weeds right now. It's not rare, it's mid-July. Um, we don't want the deer here right now because they'll just overrun the place when we have the fall food come in. This is about an acre and a half food plot. And you know, we have the redneck blind behind us. I have an access trail camera on a mock scrape right here. We get tons of great buck footage here. This is one of our hot spots. We have two stand locations over here. We have a water hole over here. That leads to another stand location about 300 yards from here. We have a spot for a redneck ghillie over here that we're gonna install this year. So this is one of our central areas, real important area. We don't actually hunt on this food plot often. I think I sat three times there last year in that redneck ghillie. I might do it a little bit more often this year. But this food plot is not complete when we plant it in, in um, right around early August without half of it being in a brassica blend. Now in that brassica blend, we have turnips, rape, radishes, and that blend, it's a Northwoods Whitetails blend. Uh, it's my favorite blend. It's not a real high priced blend. It's not a low priced blend. They have some real workhorse type seeds in that blend. That's what I recommend to all my clients. But uh, brassica can be a little bit touchy. I would say that 20, 25% of the lands that I go to, deer don't like brassica. And now the, where, where it doesn't work, people are very vocal. They'll say, oh, brassica, don't plant that. It's not growing for me. The deer don't like it. And it's rotting in the spring. Well, let me tell you, I mean, a lot of people make a lot of noise about that, but really that's a very low percentage of the country. Brassica is a little bit finicky because in locations where you plant it, a lot of times the deer don't want to eat it right away. Now, there are great exceptions. If you have heavily timbered areas, wilderness areas, heavily wooded areas, and that could be central Kentucky in the hill country, uh, could be northern Pennsylvania in the hills there on public land, um, in the small little chunks of private land located in that, that area. Um, could be the UP of Michigan, northern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, anywhere where you have a high percentage of cover and a smaller deer herd typically in those areas and just not a lot of great food. We're located in the ag area here and they actually hit the brassica fine here. But when you get in those areas, boy, I planted brassica for the first time back in 1999 in the UP of Michigan. Um, actually put it in in May because I wanted to overseed it with some clover and get a clover field established. Well, they demolished the brassica blend that I planted by the end of July. This is an area where there's 20 miles, there's no ag, but it's a green food source in a low food source, quality food source area. Brassica, it can be consumed, you know, people say, well, they won't touch it until the frost. That's kind of like uh, old wives tale. Uh, that was the old thinking, that was the original, because that frost state, that first frost state represents a period of time of about nine months. They could consume it in June in the right location, and it might be rotting in the fields in April. So that frost state is, it really doesn't matter too much when it comes down to that. What does matter? If you have deer that aren't touching your brassica till December, I like to move up that window. And certainly if it's rotting in the spring, there's a few things you need to do. Half of this food plot will not be brassica. We'll have peas on this, we'll have oats, and we'll have rye. And on that half of the food plot, the deer will start to heavily consume this forage by the end of August, by, with an early August planting date. They'll start to really hit it end of August, early September. We're establishing the pattern of use on this plot. So it's very natural when they want to move over to the brassica, and we're looking at a timing of late October, early November, that they do so. And so that's, that's about that right timing, late October, early November, because you have something else on the food plot, and in the case they're, they're feeding on young oats, young peas, early in August through the middle of August, and just a light amount of oats. And then I'm coming back in Labor Day and I'm adding 200 pounds per acre of winter rye right over the top of it. Well, that's another lush sod base that they'll start to consume. They love young rye. And the whole purpose of that is they're leaving the Nebraska alone. I don't want them to hit that at, that early. Now, if you have locations where they don't want to eat that brassica, even by stripping it, establishing that pattern of use, if those deer still don't want to hit that brassica until the end of December, then try adding 25 pounds of soybeans, 50 pounds of Austrian winter peas or just forage peas to your brassica planting so that you have that high quality candy forage within that brassica. And by the time you strip it out next to a food plot that's attracting um, forage in, in late August, early September, 
and if you have to add those sweeteners and those candies of soybeans and peas to the brassica blend i found very very few locations where deer will not eat in brassica why have brassica brassica is awesome because in a very short period of time you can produce a high volume highly attractive highly nutritional high digest digestible forage for deer the digestibility is incredible with brassica. They can consume that. There's a lot of moisture for them. Think about it when that corn's out there in late November and it's 15%, 12%, 10% protein, and then you have a brassica leaf in here that is 80, 85% uh, moisture, and that corn is sitting there at 10, 12% moisture. Big difference on your land. You don't even need a water hole. They just feed on that brassica. So brassica is a high volume, ton and a half, two tons per acre of forage one ton, depending on the soil, that you can produce in a very short period of time of about 10 weeks. That's why it's good. You know, clover is a large amount of volume, but it's spread out over from May through September, and then when the frost hit, it starts diminishing. So just in comparison. So Braska is an awesome tool that you can use. It's easy to set up and make sure the deer use it. I mean, think about it. If you have a lone, if this was a lone Braska plot, and the deer, this wasn't a part of that early hunting season pattern for deer, why do you expect deer to f suddenly move from a half mile, three quarters of a mile away where they're feeding on other forages all of a sudden in late November, December and start using the brassica? You haven't established that pattern of use. Split your food plots, establish that pattern of use with brassica, add sweeteners if needed, make sure the deer are foraging on your other half of the plot late August, early September. If you have enough room, strip a corn down the middle, break this food plot into a third. A corn can be a great addition to that. And uh, try using brassica. It's, it can be a stable base of green. You look at the, fo the food plot group of, of uh, foraging for deer, that bottom portion of the food plot triangle is green. I look at the second portion as corn, and then that little triangle, if you have enough room in the right situation, soybeans and beans can be great. Brassicas can be a mainstay of your food plot program every year. It is for mine. It's worked for me since the late 90s. Know how to make sure the deer use it. Forget about that frost date and, um, and learn why deer are eating brassica, why they're not, and match it to your conditions. And I think you can find that can be a high volume, great producer for you for a food plot addition to a diversity blend that will last all hunting season long.